Good morning, everyone. It's I, I'm back finally from my holidays away. And yes, I did watch a lot of waves while I was there. And um, but this is also something that I've had a number of requests for. So I thought today we will paint waves. So let me just get on over into my uh, other camera and uh, we'll take a look at our reference picture. So um, <laughs> I probably took a million different um, wave pictures uh, in order for me to get to get one where I actually had some of the light coming through. I was specifically looking for that. Uh, very often I see people and they're painting something and they they they're not happy with their finished result. And really, it starts from the from the beginning. You need to have uh, your reference picture that you're working from has to have the elements that you need in order for you to create um, the the type of lighting effect and things like that. Uh, this is this happens often often with uh, glass and things like that. If you put glass on a table in a room, it it looks nice. Yeah, it looks nice. But if you really want it to sparkle, put it in a window and let the light shine through it. And the waves are a lot like that. So, so we've got a lot of light coming through the, the wave here. And that's what I want to try to capture here. Um, so let's, uh, let's get on into it. I've done a very light, uh, light drawing here. You probably can't even see it, but um, I'm just going to jump right into the painting uh, of this. And I'm going to be using, I'm working first of all on Arches 140 pound cold press paper. And this, the size of this uh, will give me an 8x10 painting. It's a little larger because I've stapled it. But um, I've also softened up all of my paints here. I, I put some water in each of the wells so that the paint has a chance to, or the water has a chance to absorb into the paint and soften it up. So uh, I'm going to go into my waves in, in the background first. I'm going to establish those. Uh, but there are a couple of little splashes and things. Now I have a choice. I can either use masking fluid and uh, create some of my whites with my masking fluid, or I could use a little bit of white paint in the end. Uh, I think I prefer the white of the paper, so I'm going to use masking fluid. So uh, let's grab my masking brush here. Here we go. And uh, I prefer to use a brush. There's, I know that there's a lot of tools that you can use for applying masking fluid, but I personally prefer a small brush that's in reasonably good condition. Um, it doesn't have to be an expensive brush, but make sure you've got a brush that's in reasonably good condition so that you can paint it with the accuracy that you actually want. So this went all the way with me <laughs> on my holiday and I did not open it once. So it, it took a trip too. <laughs> all right, so I want to I want to look for all the whitest areas. Now, I'm not talking about the white surf. Like, this is white surf in here, but you can see that quite clearly that it is not white. I'm looking for the actual whites, and that's what I want to preserve. So, I'm going to come in and dabble in some of this uh, splash here. Uh, there's, there's actually a couple little drops uh, of wave or like little droplets of water that are airborne and that type of thing. So I'm going to use a little bit of that. And I'm trying as much as possible to uh, replicate the, the shapes and things that I'm looking at. They are very sort of arbitrary, a little bit random. So I won't make it exactly the same. I think that would be, well, near impossible. So I'm just going to do my best to get some sort of resemblance to the type of wave that I'm looking at. Okay, a couple little little drops. The little drops uh, that are airborne, I want them different sizes, uh, different spacing, all of that type of thing. 
I don't want them all to look like, uh, you know, I just did a pattern of some kind. You almost can't go wrong here, just a lot of dabbling and that sort of thing. Now here's where I want to be careful because he, right along here I've got a straight edge and then I have a lot of that sort of wave splashing up right from behind, from behind another curl. So that's what I'm making sure that I have that nice straight edge there. And one of the reasons I like to use masking fluid is uh, it allows me to just paint the big washes freely, not have to slow down and work around things. Uh, you know, that's that's kind of a wash killer if you have to do that. So I'm going to uh, just put this on fairly quickly. doesn't need to go on thick and there's a few little smaller areas along the tops of the wave as well and establishing this just makes makes it a lot easier for the painting process so plan 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 uh, there's nothing worse than getting in there, painting something and going, oh, uh -huh, how am I going to get those whites back? So it's good to think these things through how we're going to uh, work out this painting and, and get it all painted and preserve these light areas. So I know that slowing down is really going to be make my washes look worked and probably patchy which I want to avoid, so. There's a uh, a number of these little whites down in here. Now this this wash area down in here, like where the where it's mostly white, I'm not going to mask all of that. That's a little bit over over kill as far as the masking goes but I, what what I want to create here is maybe some of these little points that come up and that sort of thing the rest of it I'll just paint around so uh, what what I decide to paint or mask will often depend on you know how much of the white is actually there if it's mostly white then I don't bother with the masking uh, but sometimes you have these little little spots that you want to get uh, some little splashes that are coming up or something like that so I want to make sure that I'm creating that like this little guy here put a lot of, lot of masking fluid on that spot so if I don't want to wait forever for that to dry I'm going to pick that up and just use it to paint other places right just pick some of that up and keep going with it spread it out a little bit more. There's a misconception quite often that masking fluid has to go on fairly thick in order to work. That is false. It does not need a lot of, it does not need to be thick. And I think one of the reasons that a lot of people put their masking fluid on so thick is because they're using the, the colorless masking fluid. And uh, I have, I've also used the colorless. I find it very hard to see on the uh, white paper. So I'm usually, not every case, but I usually um, prefer to mask or color my masking. So I, I'll put a couple of, if I have colorless masking, I'll put a couple of drops of um, cobalt blue. Cobalt blue is non-staining uh, and I I put it into a like a little a little medicine cup or something and uh, I put my masking, I put my paint in the in there and then I apply the masking fluid and I stir it uh, like with the handle of my brush not with the bristles of my brush but I I stir it up that way and then I have uh, colored masking fluid so all of this area down here at the bottom I didn't bother masking because 
it's mostly white. So I'm just seeing all the greetings, my goodness. Uh, bonjour, uh, hello. <laughs> uh, I don't know all the languages, so, um, but we will, French and English, that's about it for me. <laughs> But greetings from everywhere. Um, I I was in uh, I was in Florida actually on my holiday last week. So uh, I I was as I said looking at a lot of waves. Now while that's drying, I'm going to take another look at my picture and I want to plan out how I'm going to approach this. And I think I'll start with uh, this this blue wash that's in behind. Uh, the lighter blue, not the darker blue, the darker blue will go on top, but I will start with this lighter blue wash in behind. And the one thing I notice about the waves is that they really stir up the sand, you know, at, in the shallow water here. So we get the, um, you know, the color of the water changes dramatically. Uh, it, it goes from very blue to almost a green, like an olive type of green. Uh, the surf in here look at this this is we know that this is white but because the 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 wave itself is creating a shadow on it this is just about as dark as that and which is quite surprising that's how different it can be from the white white of the paper to this darker blue here and we have a lot of this darker blue in here and this is this is the result of having bright sunshine uh, so, so this was um, a little later in the day, so the shadows are kind of off to the left side, and uh, it's it's pretty consistent throughout. We've had we've got this blue that's really really quite dark. So what I can do while I'm waiting for this to dry is I can come in and uh, work maybe on my sand. Um, you know, there's a drop or so up here that still has a tiny bit of shine. So I'm going to just give that a little bit more time to dry, but I'll come in and uh, do this sand in the foreground. Sand is a color that, uh, that a lot of people kind of struggle with. It almost always ends up too yellow. So I don't start with yellow. I start with something more like a raw sienna, which is in the yellow family but uh, not, obviously not that bright yellow. It's almost a little bit more brownish, like a blonde brown. Uh, the complement to yellow is a purple. So I could easily neutralize this yellow so it doesn't look, like, you know, this is obviously not a yellow. It's almost, it's almost more of a gray color here uh, with, with a complementary color. So I could mix either a purple with a, uh, maybe some cobalt and permanent rose or something like that. I could mix a little of that in and that would neutralize it. I could take any, but that's kind of a bright purple. Uh, so I wouldn't need very much. I need just a little tiny bit. Remember how much stronger purple is compared to the strength of a yellow. A yellow isn't going to cover up much. So, uh, you only need a tiny bit of purple to neutralize this. Now, if it looks a little too pink, you probably need a little more blue purple, a little bit more blue added, but it's basically all the primaries with, with your yellow being not a bright yellow, but a, a, a raw sienna here. All right. So I'm getting closer here. Let's just, get this a little more gray. I'm going to need a little bit more too because I've got I've got a sizable area and not mixing enough paint is really going to um, <laughs> well it's going to mess me up because I'll have to remix part way through and I really don't want to be doing that. A little bit more. Just playing around with the uh, ratios here till I get what I want. And what I'll do 
is just give it a little test. Okay, so I think I'm still a little bit too pink. So I'll add a little bit more of the blue. That's a lot better. All right, so that's what I'm going to use in here. Now, you could also use uh, a, like a granulating color, uh, something like... I, you know, I could have used uh, Daniel Smith's um, Moon Glow or something like that. I could have used that as my purple that I added to my raw sienna. And that would give me something granulating, which would resemble your uh, sand texture. So I'm going to come in here and just... There's a couple of little bits of blue in here, so I'm going to leave some little spaces for that. Some little bits of this blue right along here. So I will leave a space for that. I'm not making it exactly like the photo. There's no need for me to do that. Keep this wash nice and wet in order to make sure that you don't have brush marks in it. And that's why it's really good to have a, um, a good sized puddle, like make sure you've got sufficient color because the, uh, you know, if you take your paint and you spread it out too far, then it dries right away and you don't get the the colors or you don't get each stroke blending into the previous one so dries too thin on the paper so we have um, the color for the sand when that dries that'll dry a little bit lighter so i will end up with something a little bit closer to what this is hopefully all right so let me just wipe my tape off This is to make sure that I don't get uh, brush marks, or I don't get, uh, not brush marks, but so I don't get any of those uh, droplets getting back onto the, onto the wash. And uh, let it, um, uh, you know, create blossoms or something like that. All right, so let's take a look at this blue up here. I'm going to get my brush rinsed out there. And I would say that is pretty close to um, to a standard cobalt. Let's see here, a little bit darker. So I'd say that's a pretty close match to the lighter blue that you see in the hair. So, and I'm not going to worry about anything. Uh, below this line for now. And I'm going back to my puddle on my palette very often so that I have a wet wash, not a dry wash. And that's so that I'm not spreading the paint too thin. Uh, took me a long time to realize that that's what I was doing wrong. Why my washes weren't smooth. I wasn't using wet enough color. And one of the reasons I wasn't using wet enough color was because I wasn't making a puddle big enough. All right. Once again, I'm going to wipe off my tape. Okay, so I've got some warm, I've got some cool. I'm going to give this a dry. Because I have masking fluid on here, I want to make sure I keep my uh, dryer moving quickly, moving around. I don't want to bake any of this masking fluid on here. This is actually a heat tool, so I really have to be careful.
Okay, that'll be good enough for now. I'm going to take a smaller brush. Um, by the way, I am using squirrel hair brushes, a natural hair brush. They hold a lot more uh, paint and or water. So these are uh, travel brushes. You can find all, all the materials that I typically use, you can find here on my website. There's a page called Materials. And uh, for your information, this, uh, this palette that I have has been discontinued. So you'll be searching till the cows come home to try to find it. Um, but your best bet is a garage sale. <laughs> there is a, a similar palette by uh, Stephen Quiller. There's also one by Meaden, M-E-E-D-E-N, uh, similar to this palette as well. It's, a, it's, I believe, a ceramic one with a plastic cover. This one also does have a, a cover as well, uh, but I really only cover it if I'm traveling somewhere. I don't leave the cover on. I do let my paints dry out. And the reason I do that is to prevent creating mold because paint, you know, if you enclose a lot of moisture in an area that doesn't have air, you're going to invite mold. So paints do get moldy, and uh, so that's what I do. So I'm going to use a seven, I think, a seven brush for this. And I'm going to use some more of that cobalt. And I'm going to start working on some of the uh, some of the shadows down here in the lower section. So I can bring this over onto the onto the uh, screen so that you can see the area that I'm working on so that I can see it. Uh, there's something to be said for keeping your reference picture in close proximity to where you're working because what that does is it uh, allows you to record, remember the information. I know it's, it's not a long distance to, to look from your left to your right, but you'd be quite surprised at how much information can actually get lost in that short distance. So keeping your reference picture in close proximity is a really uh, good habit to get into. Okay, so I'm going to, I wanna come up into some of these areas up in here, so I wanna make sure that I have my masking fluid showing there too. And remember in this area, I'm actually painting around whites. I am not, I didn't, mask all of it so I'm actually painting around whites and I do think that this actually has to get darker um, you know strong sunlight means strong shadows so I want to make sure I'm getting some good strong shadows in here so I'm coming in with stronger color for my shadows which of course will dry lighter And as I'm painting this, I, what I'm thinking, what's going through my mind is uh, the shapes of the whites. So I am negative painting around all these whites. I may come in, I may add more darks to this. Uh, but I want to keep this uh, fluid and spontaneous looking. Sometimes it'll be like little little pockets of blue, blue shadow. my blue a little stronger it seems to be a little bit a little bit weak and it seems like it's such a strong 
strong shadow, but it is it is pretty pretty dark. All right, so we've got some some more little bits of blue. Now this this blue is a little weaker, so I'm going to dilute it a little bit through here. So I'm not just putting in the shadows, I'm also thinking how dark is the shadow. There's some areas that are a little lighter, some that are darker. And I'm considering that as I go along here. All right, back to my darker blue and lots of dib dabbling and, and dotting, that type of thing. I, I might decide even even when I'm done, I might decide to put in a couple of little uh, accents with some more using white paint. Uh, you know, I try not to do the majority of my painting with white paint. I think that always looks like a correction, you know, like white out on paper. You know, you can always tell it's there. You know, it might it might give you the white of the paper back. It'll cover up the mistake, but you always see it. You can tell white out was used. And it's. I always feel the same way about white paint. Uh, it always looks a little bit like that. Now, a lot of this is very blue, but as I'm coming over into this section, I'm seeing a little bit more of the greenish color coming through. So I'm going to start changing up some of this. I'm going to add a little bit of, uh, I'm going to add a little bit of the raw sienna, that raw sienna that is the color that we used in the sand so i'm going to use a little bit of that uh, to start changing up the color here your tendency you know when you think green your tendency is to grab you know a nice bright yellow uh, but i find that that just gives you such a unnatural green uh, and it's not it's not a brilliant green if i was looking for a brilliant green a yellow a bright yellow would be the way to go but since i'm not Not looking for that kind of a color. I've got this uh, more of an olive type of coloring here. Even a little bit of raw sienna in some of these places. It it's surprising, you know, even though it's a white surf and, and color, you think, well, water doesn't really have color. It's really reflecting the sky. Uh, but it also, uh, you can see through it. So you can see the silt and the sand coming up through all of that. So I'm alternating uh, between colors here to get some of that uh, color in, the, in these shadows. That They're not all just identical. What uh, what brand of I'm I'm guessing you meant to say print uh, paint I'm using uh, Da Vinci watercolors and uh, yeah thanks thanks for putting that in capitals it makes it a lot easier for for me to find uh, questions if they are capitalized. There's also, I'm noticing that there is some significant shadows on the sand itself. I'm going to come in here with some of that, some of that blue and come in and add the shadows from this surf here, emphasizing the, the strength of the sun even further. So I'm overlapping into the sand area to get that. more cobalt breaking up all that white space some of this a little bit it's 
putting it in and it's a little bit strong so I'll dilute it a little bit and put in some more subtle stuff. I can overlap some of my blues and, and get something a little bit more convincing here. Paying attention to the shapes I'm seeing as well. You know, the, the tops are almost rounded, like snowballs, right? They're, they're like kind of rounded. So I want to make sure that I'm capturing that rounded shape. I'm not just arbitrarily putting in dots. All right, um, I'm going to take, I think, my, my little fan brush. Um, here's the little fan brush. I've got a little fan brush here. It's just a uh, 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 Taclon bristle uh, synthetic brush. And I'm going to spatter a little bit. So I'm going to bring my paper down here so I don't spatter over top of uh, areas that I don't want to spatter. And I'm going to take some of the color from the water and spatter a little bit here and there just to give some of the texture, the bubbles. There's like little tiny, a lot of this surf is really just little bubbles in the, in the uh, water, right? So I can capture that texture there. I can even take some of my... Uh, sand color. Let's take this sand color down here. And I can spatter some of that in my sand to get the texture of the sand. And I like using this little fan brush and holding it close. I find that I don't have like spatters all over the place if I do this method. And you'll notice that I'm holding holding this brush and tapping this one because I can hold this really close and the the paint comes off the brush kind of jumps off the brush <laughs> if you will instead of spattering all over the way a, a toothbrush or something like that will work I've seen other people and they they do it the other way they they hit something hard with the brush itself and I find that I don't have quite as much control there so I like to just tap this little brush hold it close to the paper and tap and I can get, you know, if you use these little fan brushes, they're, they're really good for giving you that really fine, delicate texture. Okay, so that's given me some sand texture. So we have, we have a pretty good uh, start to this, uh, this here. Some of the blues are a little bit light. I still need to come in and darken some of that. And I will, and I need to come in and also darken in the uh, waves in the background. And I want to take some of that blue right now, though, and use some of that to create some of the the similar type of shadows up in in this part of the wave and in the surf part of the wave. So it's same coloring. Lots of blue. You could add a little uh, raw sienna to it if it's like too shocking of a blue. But um, I'm going to come in here and paint this surf. And as it comes into the light, like if there's a part here where it comes into the light, it's going to get a little bit brighter blue. So notice things like those little transitions. You see that the, the color starts to change a little bit uh, brighter in those areas.
don't have it exactly the same way, but it doesn't, doesn't really matter. In a split second, all of this changes anyway. That's the other thing about photographing waves. Uh, I suggest if you have an iPhone or something like that, you choose the live setting because the, what the live setting will give you is sort of stages of the wave, and then you can pick the one that gives you the the best representation, you know, that, that split second moment when the light comes through just before the wave starts to crash. Okay, so then we come down into this area here. And what happens in this area is, uh, you know, we're, we're going from a wall of, of wave, right? So it's vertical. Now, the, now we're looking at the horizontal. So everything has to get very horizontal here. Looking a little too bright there. So we'll just dull some of that down. This is where it's really handy to have the um, top of this masked off here because you've got the, uh, you know, the horizontal lines that are going through here and you don't want to have to slow down to work around them. All right, so this, remember one thing. When you're doing this area here, remember that the surf is only this dark color in the shadow. In the light, it's much lighter, obviously, <laughs> but I mean, it's definitely more blue in the in the shadow areas, and it becomes just a a lot, um, a lot more diluted in the in the highlight areas, like where it's actually coming into the sun. So it's only the shadow areas that are getting this this treatment. All right, so we've got some there. We've got um, a little bit more bright blue up in here. And you'll notice my palette. I've got um, not just one uh, one area that I've uh, you know mixed it all together. That I've got you know I can choose between that sort of greenish color or the brighter blue if I want to. So I can ad I can adjust as I go along. Now I've saved a lot of my light areas in here, so I can just paint right along the top of that wave, the wave in front. I can paint along the top of that. And this, this part here is very interesting. It's um, sort of curling over. That's like the surfer's wave kind of thing. And it's a little bit more greenish. So I want to make sure I'm capturing that effect as well. I'm going to make this darker, stronger color. I actually do want it a little more actual green. This is this is more green in here. So I'm going to take a little bit of uh, maybe some, how about quinacridone gold? 
Let's see if that gives me the green I'm looking for. So that's pretty good close close to what I'm looking for there. And here's where I'm going to come along and start coming down into the the uh, wave itself. Now you notice that when when I was putting in some of these marks that I was making them curved just like the shape of the uh, just like the shape of the wave, right? So it curves over. Uh, what colors made the same color? The same color? Um, the, okay, I've been using Raw Sienna by Da Vinci. I've been using Cobalt Blue for most of my wave stuff, most of the shadows in the waves here. For the sand, I used uh, Raw Sienna I created a purple with my cobalt blue and permanent rose. Mixed that together. Played a little bit with the the, the ratio of the uh, each color to, to get something close to what I was looking for. I wanted a grayish color. And you can see now that it has now that it has dried and it's lighter, it's it's it represents the, the same color as, as what you see here. So uh, that was Rossiana with a purple, which is the uh, complementary color. But I got to keep painting here. So this green color I'm putting in here, and I am bringing it down into this, into like little strings, I guess, as it cur curls over. It is a darker uh, color than the shadow. I used a little bit of uh, quinacridone gold uh, to mix up my my green for this section here, and I chose quinacridone gold because it's a very uh, very nice um, transparent yellow. Do consider the transparency of your color when you're mixing colors. Uh, you may not get exactly the results you're looking for if you are. Um, continually using opaque color, it will make a difference. Now I'm just coming along here with a damp brush, something I've blotted, I've blotted my brush. I'm coming in here just to soften up some of this along the edge so that it's not a harsh transition right there. So I'm going to come in here and I'm mostly trying to keep this in the white area. So I'm trying to work around those blues. You've got kind of this warm color and then you've got this uh, green, warm blue gray color and then you've got or cool blue gray color I should say. And then I'm coming in with this uh, green which is a little warmer because it's got the yellows in it. Just dabbling this in to get the get the whites covered up. Now some of the whites showing probably is not a big deal. I could come in um, and blend those in as I go. But I wanted to get the feeling of the light coming through, and that's going to be really evident right in this wave here in particular. This one hadn't, you know, this one's not quite as uh, thinned out, I guess, the wave. So it's not doesn't have as much of the light passing through, but I can still get something pretty similar. Um... The th what type of small fan brush? Uh, where did I put it? This one was a, it's a low Cornell, which you know you can't make anymore. But you can get all kinds. I've got this little cheap one. I don't even know what brand it is. It's oh, this one's a, a Jane. Uh, Jane, I, I can't even read it anymore. Cornell, uh, Jane Cornell, I think. Uh, it was given to me years ago any of these little small fan brushes 
they're just synthetic they're not expensive so um, you can you can use most uh, mostly any brand I think As I'm painting this section, I'm looking at sort of this, this continuous line along the top of the wave in front. I think that that's kind of an important thing to be paying attention to. I do have a lot of masking along here, so I don't have to um, work too hard to keep along that line, but there's some areas that didn't have it, so didn't have any masking because it's not just a white line across the top of that. Oh, I'm getting a bit of a hard line there. Let's see if I can work that in. The paint's really fresh. Sometimes just a little bit of massage will help get the, uh, uh, you know, any brush marks blended in. As long as you're fast about it. All right, and I'm gonna start coming down into this area here. Now, as I come into the light-filled area, I wanna make sure that I'm keeping my paint very diluted. The, the light coming through means that I don't wanna block the white of the paper. A lot of people don't seem to understand that the white in your painting or the light in your painting comes from the whiteness of the paper. So don't cover up the whiteness and you'll get your light areas looking light. So I'm coming in here with my paint pretty diluted, but I'm still kind of working around those, those shadows and things. And I'm working around those those shapes in the blue that I did earlier. <clears throat> now I can start getting a little heavier as I come down. And this again is my cobalt mixed with a um, little bit of quinacridone gold. Quinacridone gold is pretty, pretty strong actually, so you don't need a lot of it. You can see all of a sudden I have something very, very strong. <laughs> so I'm going to have to come back and get more of my, more of my blue in there. And I gotta keep this moving quickly. And at this point, as I get down further into the wave, I want to make sure that I'm getting it's looking a little too a little too um, strong. The color's not quite neutralized. So I'm putting a little raw sienna into this as well, just to calm down that color a little bit. It's a little too unnatural. But I want to make sure that this this area here is actually darker than the blue or very similar in, in value. I don't want to have this part lighter than the blue. Let's get that blended in a little bit.
Okay, I'm rinsing my brush and I'm blotting it because I want to smooth this out. I don't want to have that um, harsh line. So I blotted my brush and I'm just laying it down to smooth that out a little bit. Not really looking for a perfect smooth wash. I kind of like that um, that variation there. come in on this other side and I'm going to create something similar. I've got that a little too green, I think. Not as much light coming through this part of the wave. It's a little bit of a nuisance actually to paint around the the little bits of blue that I've done, but um, that's that's the effect we need. All right, so through through this area, this is the shadow area. We've got the shadow area coming across here. And then we get into the area where this surf is actually in the light. Uh, the wave itself is creating that shadow, but then we have a, an area of light. So what I'm going to do here on this little section is I'm going to uh, paint uh, basically little little lines and leaving little slivers of white. Now when I say lines, I don't mean straight lines. I'm talking also about, you know, going thick and thin and tapering off that type of thing. So it's leaving the white of the paper there in, in several spots. All right, so you can hopefully start to see, you know, some of the wave action. I'm feeling like this could almost be a little darker in here. So I'm going to come back, I think, and I'm going to add a little bit more uh, to that. That was cobalt blue, raw sienna, more more blue, but uh, there's raw sienna in it. And I want to come in and further darken some of this. So come into this. I, I have to do the middles of these little light areas here too. Surprisingly dark, isn't it? But when you have sunshine, that is how dark it actually gets. You know, if you're looking at it and you know that it's white surf, your brain starts to fight with you and say, no, 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 it can't be that dark. At least mine does. So it, it takes a little bit of effort to, uh, <laughs> to fight that battle with your brain to say, it's actually got to be darker. All right, now over here it starts coming into a little bit more light. So I will dilute the color more. I don't want to make this a sudden, uh, like all the same. And I also don't want to have it uh, just stop suddenly. I want to have this sort of blend in. And I could probably add in uh, little bits through here, although they would be very... Uh, very dark because they would be going on top of, they're not going on white paper, they're going on the, the color that's already there. But I can create the little bit of horizontal uh, motion in the water there. I'm kind of overlapping these a little bit. 
making sure I don't have any of the white paper left. And I got to fill in those middles uh, here with the green. So it's this play between green and blue for these waves. All right, I've got some little bits of this up in here as well. I can uh, come in under some of these and, and darken a little bit and blend it out. So I'm really paying attention to not just the green and the blue, but the light and the dark. Uh, the light and the dark are really going to make this feel like the light is coming through this wave. Okay, so and now I want to get into the uh, waves in the back and I'm going to take this uh, mixture up here, I'm going to mix it all together, make it nice and dark. If I want to make it even a little bit darker, I'm going to use a little bit of uh, permanent rose added to it. You take a green, you add a little bit of red and it will darken it for sure. Now, I think that's made it a little bit, maybe a little bit too purple, but we can add a little bit more of the mixture, and that that's giving me a nice dark. A little stronger on the blue, I think. All right. So I'm looking for these dark lines that I want to add in here. And I can see that that's going to give me something close. Now I'm looking for the motion here. These are not straight across. Look at the slight diagonal to them. Notice how each of the shapes starts as a point, widens, and then tapers off to a point again. All right, actually, I'm going to put my hand in wet paint, so I'm just going to quickly dry this. Adding just a little bit more blue. I think it could be a little bit more blue. Uh, and... So I'm going to put in a couple of the larger, the larger shadows on the waves and start off uh, with my brush on an angle. Oh, wait, my brush is not angled like this as I'm painting. It's the handle of the brush is going in the direction of the stroke so that I'm pulling it along and it will taper on both ends. It's very hard when you are holding your brush like this and you're trying to taper both ends, it's much more difficult. So put your brush in the direction of, um, you know, the way you want to taper off the line and you'll find it a lot easier to do. And the first stroke always looks so dark so dark but then you get more on there and it looks a lot more natural okay so i put some big ones in then i will sort of fill in all the gaps with small ones
And you get these diagonal lines because I was looking, I wasn't um, photographing this straight, to, like from the beach straight towards the wave. I was looking more to my left. So that has given me a uh, more of a angle on this water. So you'll notice how I press the brush a little bit to make that get wider through the middle. These are not just lines. All right, so now lots and lots and lots of these little shapes going in between. You can even dilute your color a little bit so that, you know, they're not all equally dark. You know, the smaller the, the wave, the... Um, less pronounced the shadow's going to be. Being very careful not to overlap my wave in front, of course, but And as I do these little lines, I want you to notice one other thing. I am not arching or swooping. It's basically a straight line. Uh, that's what I'm seeing in my reference. So that's what I'm trying to replicate. And the little, the little tiny strokes are equally important. Um, might even take a smaller brush for um, creating some of the smaller ones. But I think I can get a pretty good amount done with this brush. Don't worry if they overlap, that happens. It actually is going on in the waves as well, that they overlap a little bit. Put in some short waves, long waves. I think it helps not to work in rows as well. If you work in rows, uh, then it tends to look really like a wallpaper. Yeah, I think you can get uh, you can get smaller palettes with 10 paint wells. Um, I'd have to have a look at that one. I'm, I, I would be interested in seeing that one, but uh, this one uh, size wise is, you know, there's my hands. So it gives you some idea of the scale of this. I forget how many inches it is. Um, 16 inches or something like that. 15, I don't know, something similar to that. That's what I have. Uh, not exactly a travel palette because it, uh, you know, it's a bit large, although I do carry it around with me quite a bit. Um, the lid for this is not airtight. Uh, it's also not um, like, it, I know that they make some pa palettes with a, a rubber gasket uh, so that the paint doesn't leak out and all of that sort of thing those that's mostly with travel palettes um, but I wouldn't really want it that airtight anyway so if I'm carrying this somewhere I have to carry it like a pizza that I don't want all the toppings to fall off right so that I have to it's a little inconvenient if you're carrying it to and from classes uh, but I find it's a teaching tool it's very helpful so I like uh, carrying this one 
even if it is a little inconvenient. I, I carry it, but it's only inconvenient from the car to the to the studio or back. That's it. Then you have an enjoyable painting experience because you've got wet paint to work with. All right, so I'm getting there. I'm almost almost finished all of this. Let's speed this up a little bit. Not looking too closely at it anymore. It's so much of the same. But notice the variety that I have in that water. I don't have it all looking exactly the same. So I'm going to give that a dry. Oh, actually, I want to come down and, and add uh, some more um, into these shadows. I think these shadows could be a little stronger to emphasize the, the sunlight. Let's get those a little darker. Right, that shadows can be darker. I'm going to come in with a little bit more, I think, with the with the blues, just to give me a little bit more uh, dimension. If you only have two values, which right now I only have two values in here, it tends to look flat. So a lot of people would just leave it flat looking like that, but I really think that it's important to come in with a third value. So I've got the white of the paper, I've got this mid value, and now I'm going to come in with some dark darks, you know, I, I don't mean like like get out the Payne's gray or anything like that. I just mean a darker version of what I've been using. And that will make this look a lot more dimensional. Make the shadows look stronger. Make the highlights, which in, in turn makes the highlights look brighter. I'm coming into the areas that I, I expect the the darks would be darker because I'm not making it exactly the same. I have to just kind of look at, follow the lead of what I'm seeing in my reference picture and uh, go by that as to where I put these extra darks. But basically they are at, uh, they were right next to the highlight of the wave below or the, the mound of white below. So it's you know, in the crevices, basically. And, and I will look to see, is there, is there more I can do with some of these areas up in here? And I want to do all this before I start taking off the masking fluid, because that's going to, um, once the masking fluid comes off, it makes it really, really difficult to paint around those whites kind of defeats the purpose of having the masking fluid on there if you don't get everything done before it comes off. Just coming in to darken some more spots. I think this area in here could be darker, so I'm going to take some of that greenish color. Definitely see that darker. And it can get a little lighter again towards the top. I'll just I just rinsed my brush and I'm painting clean water in there to help that blend. So that makes that wave feel a lot more curled. Now how can I make this feel like it's curling over a little bit more? Again, I, I need that third value. I need to have something extra dark up in here. So I'm putting a little extra dark uh, at the top, which sounds, sounds sort of backwards, but that's what's there. And I will soften this lower edge here.
Okay, so I think I'm almost at the point where I can take off the masking fluid. Uh, might put a little bit more right in here. Could I slow this down and paint it a lot more carefully, more um, accurately, but I don't think it needs to be. I would like to see it a little bit more yellow or gold in, in here. So I'm going to take some of that quinacridone gold. And I'm going to come into this with that quinacridone gold. And I didn't mix that with the blue because I really just wanted to get the green that's already there. A little bit more gold. And so I'm going to put some of that quin gold in there and blend it in. A little bit more of that Quin Gold in the greenish areas here. Uh, usually when sunlight passes through the sand, you will get a little bit more of this, um, or through the wave I should say, and the sand is in there. Uh, it's, you're going to pick up a little bit more of that, that golden color. Gold will also um, often represent light very nicely for you. I did the mix. It had it had some of that Queen Gold in it, but with a little more added in, I feel like it's just going to feel a lot more warm and cool, and I will get that uh, really nice um, transition there from warm to cool. Maybe a little bit more just over here on the side. Quin gold, because it's, I mentioned earlier that it's a nice transparent color, makes it a really good color for glazing. So that's what I'm doing, is I'm glazing in some of this color. But I'm still keeping this light area here, because this is where I really want to, to show that light coming through the, the wave. Rinse and blot and just sort of help blend that in over top. So I'm able to glaze in some of those colors and really get that a little bit more um, juicy, I guess. That's my description, juicy. All right, so I'm gonna dry this so that I can remove the masking fluid and hopefully we have something that looks a little bit like our reference. Sue is saying, I put a lazy Susan under mine. I love it. Actually, it, it's. I thought about doing the very same thing. I have a lazy Susan that's almost exactly the right size. But the reason that I don't, and you'll notice from week to week that I have it oriented the same way. And it's because I can almost go to the color without even thinking where it is. I think of this like hands on a clock. So I always know my blue is right at the top. And I know that my... Um, burnt sienna's down at the bottom and so on and and I just my arm just automatically goes there so there's no spinning involved whatever you do whenever you get a new palette I would highly recommend that you label what your colors are so many people forget to label and then then they're in trouble when it's, when it comes to uh, remembering what it was we always think we're going to remember. Ha! Famous last words. Okay, that should be dry enough. So then I will take my a rubber cement pickup eraser. I'll let that cool just a little bit. And um, I can start to remove the masking fluid. You won't notice too much of it down here at the bottom where I already... Well, I just used a little bit of that for the um, just for the top of that section, but you will notice it more up in here.
And the first thing you'll notice is, wow, that's like super, super white and super solid and that sort of thing. So I will probably come in and uh, add, add just a little bit to those some of those areas. Always run my hand over to see if I've missed any spots. See these these areas here, they look okay, but when you look at the reference picture, there's like lots of little uh, subtle dots of blue gray and things like that in there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna come in and, and embellish a little bit. I don't want to leave it just undone. So I'll take my smaller brush here and a bit of my blue gray. And we'll put in a couple of little dots and subtle things in here. And I can even grab some of my white maybe and and add add little bits of white if I feel like it needs it. Just to feel like there's maybe a little more splash or something like that. You know, there's there's always little bits of white that you white paint that you could add. And when it's only little bits, it doesn't look added on. But when you try to do a large area with white paint, that's when it's that's when the trouble begins because it ne never looks quite natural. So I'm hardly using any color here, just just enough to make that look like I didn't forget to paint it. And obviously you could spend a lot of time just fiddling and playing and things like that, but essentially that's that's given me what I was looking for. Uh, probably could go a little darker in here. I think so. I think I could go a little darker in there. Um, I'm not really working around any whites in here, so I'm not too concerned about it. But I kind of like that being dark there. So I'm going to come in and this comes just about over to here, that shadow. Rinse, blot my brush, soften. Yeah, I'm feeling that's a little more powerful. I like having those darks because the darks are really what will create the feeling of light in your painting. If you don't have the darks, you can't have the light. You can bring that up a little bit more. But I do like that dark in there. I think that's quite, quite lovely. And as you can see, I can come in and fiddle and play and adjust things, but getting the right, uh, you know, the, keeping the light lights and some of the dark darks is really what it's all about. Blot my brush, soften this. Sometimes you don't see these things until the until the what uh, masking fluid comes off, right? You just you see everything more the way it will be as a finished painting, and then you see spots. Oh, well, okay, I, I could I could add a little bit more dark here, or I could uh, soften this, or whatever the case may be. All right, so I'm feeling like uh, that's got the right feel, and uh, I think that's going to wrap this one up. So uh, let me just have a quick look back at all the questions and see if I've missed any. I hope I haven't. Um, some of you are very helpful with um, supplying uh, um, alternatives to the palette and things like that. Thank you for that. Um, it looks like I'm just looking for the capitalized questions. Um, 
what kind what brand of printer am I using? I am using a brother printer. It's um it's a big one. It's really big. It it prints some um, 11 by 17 a size and it has the scanner and everything. I forget the model number. Um it is uh I don't know. I have to I have to think of that one. Maybe I can add it into the notes underneath, but it's a brother printer. And it's got the, you know, the ink saver thing like the huge uh, the large capacity uh inks which I'm almost out of. <laughs> so I have to I'm going to have to order that today. But uh that's what I'm using. Um let me see. I don't think I've missed anything else. I'm back to back to the beginning where the greetings are so I think uh, uh, and by the way I do read everything uh, I know I'm skimming back to see the questions as I'm painting on the fly and that sort of thing but I go back through every single video I do and I read all of your comments I can't always I can't reply to it after the video ends uh, but I, w I do want you to know that I read and appreciate all of your comments and uh, all the super thanks and things like that I, re I really do appreciate that so uh, that's going to wrap this one up for today. I hope you got uh, some some uh, nuggets of information out of that. Uh, three different kinds of, of water here. We've got this, uh, the water surface in the background. We've got the waves and then we've got the surf here in the foreground and the sand. So, you know, there are quite a few elements here. All right, so um, I guess that's going to wrap up today's lesson and uh, I'll be back again next week for another one. Always send me your your suggestions. I appreciate that. Thank you. Bye.